Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome or welcome back again to another video tutorial from the Apex Predator Billiards Club. My name is Apex Selenio and yes, we are back on the practice table once more to learn about another kicking system. This system is of course a familiar two-wheel kicking system, non-numerical, because a lot of you guys are not so equipped to learning about the numerical systems in kicking of two rails, one rail, and it's very difficult for you to actually be calculating while you're playing in an intense match. So I brought you here this two rail kicking system known as the parallel shift kicking system. We're gonna be looking at a couple of variances, such as when the angle of incidence or the angle heading into the first rail is a bit sharp. When it's a bit shallow, we're going to be experimenting on the different types of spin, such as helping spin and running sides, when to use them and how we can get effective and a sure contact on our object ball. So we're going to be experimenting on the methodology, how the process goes when we have to measure it up and let's see how best we can actually get ourselves out of safeties that is very common in rotational pool. So without further ado, let's jump right into today's lesson. But before we do so, do not forget to smash the subscribe button below, turn on your post notification bell, consider dropping a like, and do not forget to share the content to your pool communities. Also, do check the description box below for links to my other kicking videos. I'm gonna be leaving some links here, right here in the cards for you, that you can actually check out and improve your kick game so without further ado let's jump right into today's lesson all right guys so i have a familiar situation here that is set up for you i'm going to be just calling this my benchmark two-wheel kicking system and why i call this my benchmark is it the object ball and the cue ball is in close proximity but it's not too close to my object ball and it's not too far so this does not require excess spin and also does not require me to remove as much of the spin. I'm just gonna standardize the system here and I'm going to be using a benchmark spin of two tips to the right or left, depending on the direction and one tip up. This is approximately about two o'clock spin. And so this benchmark shot here is where I have my object ball, which is about one diamond across from the side rail and two diamonds down from the short rail. And I have my cue ball here just across from the side pocket, maybe about one diamonds out. Now, I do not have to put my cue ball or my object ball in a strategic position. No matter where you are on the table, you're going to be able to do this measurement here. So here is how the process goes. The first thing we want to do is that we want to establish a midpoint that is lying, an imaginary midpoint that is lying between the object ball and the cue ball. And that is simply, um, that can simply be established by standing perpendicular to the imaginary line connecting from the cue ball, from the cue ball here to the object ball. So I'm estimating that about here is going to be my midpoint. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that this is a good reference on my midpoint. Now, what I want to do here is that I actually want to just kind of pivot my cue around and I'm going to be extending my cue towards the pocket that is closest to the first rail that I'm actually going to be aiming at, right? And then once I've established that midpoint and I've done my extension, I'm simply going to do a parallel shift across to my cue ball. So once that parallel shift, you have to just be a little bit careful, hold the butt end of the cue with two hands, guys. Kind of raise your cue lightly like this and kind of parallel shift over until you're satisfied that you have gotten a reference point here and based on that movement i estimate here that this is approximately the point of reference now this kind of takes the guesswork out of the kicking because sometimes you're going to be using feel and feel is something that you have whenever you have consistent success with this you have a feel for the natural angle but a lot of persons don't have a feel for it so you actually have to try to find a reference and sometimes you look a little bit awkward when you do this and you pivot. So you take some practice to actually get used to how fast you need to do this. So I'm going to get my object ball, sorry, my obstacle ball here. And we're going to be pretending that 
um, there's no other option except to go two rails here all right so here we go um, have my reference point and then what I'm going to be doing here is that I'm going to be using two tips to my left in this case and one tip up and I should be able to contact the one ball very full so let's see how this works out in between the first diamond and the pocket here and let's get around to the angles And that there is a very nice full hit onto the one ball. I was very confident that I was gonna hit it. I didn't have to use excess spin. I didn't have to guess where I had to hit. It all came down to proper parallel shifting and a methodical approach towards this kicking. Now we can actually go on the other side and test the theory, okay? So let's go on the other side here. And I'm again, I'm gonna just place an obstacle ball that is stopping me from hitting the one. Okay, let's put it here. Let's put the one ball on this side here. And I'm blocked. All right, so I'm about a diamond out from the side pocket here. And again, I find the midpoint. I'm gonna place my 14 ball right at the midpoint. That's my estimated midpoint. Again, guys, the best way to estimate this position is to stand perpendicular to the line and visualize the middle of that line. Once you find that spot, you extend your cue towards the pocket nearest to the rail, and then you parallel shift over like this until you're satisfied with the reference point. And evidently, it's around the same area here. So once we are successful in doing that, we can get down using two tips to our right this time and one tip up and we should be able to hit the one ball full. And here you can see similar result as what we did before. So you can see the consistency in the kick. Now, it's the same procedure if it is that you're kicking off the end rail. So let's say that I place my object ball here this time and again I'm going to be placing my cue ball. So this time I'm going to be coming off the short rail and coming into the one this time here. All right, so it's the same procedure. This time the line connecting from the one to the cue ball is here. So again, my midpoint seems to be around this area here. So I think I'm satisfied with this. Maybe go over a little bit. Think I'm okay with that. Let me get this obstacle ball for demonstration purposes here. All right, so that's my midpoint. I'm, again, I'm just gonna be execute, extending my cue towards the pocket. And then I'm gonna just pivot over towards my right. Okay, and that gives me a reference point, which is about here. Get my obstacle ball in the way again. All right, and that gives me a reference. So I'm just gonna be using running sides here. All right, here we go, guys. And that's a legal hit. Didn't hit it as full as I wanted to. I hit it on the back end, but that is also pretty good. We are able to get ourselves out of safety. So that is the first part of this kicking system we're gonna be looking at. The next segment where we're kicking at an object ball, two rails, where the angle is a bit steep, and then another example we're looking at where it's coming off a bit shallow. So let's get into segment number two. All right, guys, so in this segment here, we're just gonna be looking at kicking at the one ball again. We can just change the object ball in this case. So we're looking at kicking at the four ball, okay? And it's a little bit easier for you to estimate the midpoint between the cue ball and the object ball because they're in close proximity. But one thing you have to bear in mind is the fact that you need to ensure that you know if the angle is too steep or the angle is too shallow. Now, usually when you're above this side, this half of the table, you're more closer to this rail here where the cue ball is going to be contacting both rails quicker. It, the, when you use the spin, it tends to come off the second rail a bit sharp. So take, for example, if I were to estimate my midpoint here, and I will parallel shift over like this. If I use running sides just like this, it tends to come a little bit sharp. 
And that's what we want to ensure that we are aware of and so we can make the necessary adjustments. This is what I call a sharp two-wheel kick angle. So in order for you to avoid missing your obstacle ball here, after finding your midpoint between the object ball and the cue ball, once you've parallel shift over to your right or left, then you have to be aware that this angle is quite steep. You can see that it's gonna be touching the corners really quickly. So what you have to do here is that you have to adjust to your right, maybe about a quarter of a diamond. So that will give the cue ball enough time to catch the rail a little bit longer on this side. And then the English, the spin will take effect and give you a full hit on the four. So let's go ahead and do our measurement once more. Again, find the midpoint between the four, the object ball here and the cue, and the cue ball. Pile the shift over. Okay, this is about here. I will adjust in this direction here and that should give me a better angle of incidence and an angle of reflection. So here we go. And you can see that's a nice full hit on the object ball. Again, you are going to be very, very confident in making a hit onto the four. Now, what's gonna happen now is that, say we are again at this spot, but this, so let's say that we are down here and we have to make a kick at the four. Let's put place somewhere random in the middle, like about here and here, okay? And we have to make, say example, a two rail kick at the four, that is one, two rails. You can see that the distance between the cue ball and the object ball is a bit farther. So finding the midpoint is going to be of crucial importance here because just off a little bit could have the cue ball coming a bit short or coming a bit long. And not only that, you're gonna find that the cue ball is coming off such a shallow angle, it tends to want to go a little bit long. So what you have to do is that you have to use additional spin just to ensure that it comes off um, at the right angle to make contact with the four. So again, estimate the midpoint between the four and the cue ball. I think I'm gonna be working with about here. For me, that seems to be about right. Okay, again, I'm satisfied with this. This is what my experience is telling me. I then I'm going to parallel shift over. Okay, I think I'm gonna be working with that. Parallel shift over like this. Be careful with your parallel shifting. And that tells me that I'm sh I should be aiming in between the first and the second diamond. Now again, please remember that the angle is a bit shallow. So the cue ball tends to go a little bit long. So you need additional spin, more rotation onto the cue ball. So let's see if we can actually get this done here. Two rear kick into the four. Another thing that I need to tell you guys is that sometimes you have to adjust a little bit higher because again, the cue ball tends to go a little bit long. So rather than aiming at in between the first and second diamond, I'm gonna be aiming closer to the first diamond here. Okay, so you wanna adjust up towards closer to the pocket. And that's a nice full hit onto the four. All right, so that last point that I just made about adjusting, remember when the angle is too steep, we adjust to our right because the spin takes a quicker effect of the first rail. When the angle is a bit, uh, when the angle is a bit, uh, sh shallow, then the spin takes effect more of the second rail, all right? And then sometimes you're gonna be kicking at an object ball that is far down into the middle of the table, all right? Let's say here, let's say we place our one ball here in the center, near to the center of the table, and we have a kick like this, all right? This is very, very a dangerous kick, but it can be done. So let's quickly go through our process. I am going to simply estimate the midpoint. So that's about, for me, about here. I think that's about right. This is about right for me. Again, I'm just gonna be extending my cue towards the pocket. Then I'm gonna be parallel shifting over like this. All right, so I'm satisfied with the fact that I should be aiming somewhere near to the first diamond. All right, 
Now this angle is shallow and my cue ball is far down into the middle of the table so that tells me that I may have to use a bit of check size that is contrary English. So that means I'm going to have to use a trace of right spin along with the adjustment above the first diamond here. All right, remember that adjustment guys because the cue ball tends to go a little bit long off the first wheel when the angle is shallow and it comes off a bit sharp when the angle is steep. So I think that a bit of check sides here and just above the first diamond should get the job done. Let's see here. And that was a nice hit. Did take me a couple of tries, I have to admit. But that shot there, when the object ball is down towards the middle of the table, it requires a bit of check sides. And the parallel shift has to be almost meticulously calculated. So that is basically the end of the video. That's the end of the kicking system. Do go on the table, guys. Experiment a little bit on it, see how it works for you, get some practice in on the table and get a feel for this system. It's a powerful system that can get yourselves out of really, really complicated positions. And this is just one of the secrets that the pros have in their kicking game. Well, with that said, that brings us to the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Do not forget to smash the subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell. Leave me a comment down below guys, let me know what you think about the system. And of course, do not forget to share the content out. Do take care until next time, this is Apexcel and you're signing out with another kicking series. Look out for my banking series coming up guys and also some more safety principles coming up. Do take care, see you soon. Peace.